A very warm welcome to you out there for joining us in this special edition of the program, AIT Infotech Network. And I am Bayero Agabi. For details, you can log on to AITinfotechnetwork.com or better yet, still, you watch us live on Saba Africa TV that is on YouTube. You're welcome. For news, views, trends in ICT globally and in Africa in particular, Watch AIT Infotech Network for the latest news and innovation in ICT for development in Africa. Plus, what technology can do for you from business to politics, tourism and culture. I am Bayero Agabi. You're welcome. The accelerated liberalization of the past decade has allowed the rapid growth of Nigeria's ICT sector. A telecoms penetration rate of more than 70% has been reached, up from 2% in 2002, with the mobile footprint covering most of the country. Internet users continues on an upward slide, with over 45 million Nigerians connected. On the global scene, the story is not different as millions of applications are driving the numerous devices churned out by manufacturers, from smartphones to tablets and gaming devices. Communication has become at a speed of light. This quickly brings to mind the relevance of the traditional mailing system in today's digital world. The advent of television has not obliterated the use of radio. So the advent of computer technology also has not obliterated the use of uh, uh, television. So it's going from one aspect of technology, whether it is the lowest stratum to highest. So you discover that the post will always be a civilization propelled industry and industry that also propels civilization. In the United States, which is home to some of the world's biggest tech companies, the post office has come under severe pressure. In the UK, the seeming dearth of the post office made the government to make serious commitments to save the system in 2010, providing about £1.34 billion to modernize the post office network and safeguard its future. Similarly, the Nigerian government recently moved the Nigerian Postal Service to the Ministry of Communication Technology for proper communication and integration into the demands of the new age. But generations that have grown in the Internet age are seeing less and less utility in mail services, as most offerings have moved online. Personally, it's been a while because I can easily log on to the Internet on my inbox and get all the documents I need or exchange uh, correspondence with uh, friends, family and even co-workers. Yes, it's not often. I can remember the last time I make use of it was last month. With such trouble for the postal system, the question is, what should it be doing next? I think the first thing that we attract people to really pay attention to night post services is uh, one, uh, fast delivery of service. People want things to be done right on the spot. They want their message to get to the recipient and from there they will be comparing what internet can offer them or rather what the digital world can offer them. I believe what they can do is that they should try to update the way and manner they operate their business. Innovation, they say, makes the difference. Smart countries are innovating to ensure the post office remains relevant in today's digital world. A lot of post office across the world now offer banking, mobile services, digital document handling, and online access, among others. In Nigeria, the story is not different, as iPod says is transiting from their existing model to the digital world. Well, as far as Nipost is concerned, the electronic-based services are just leveraging on what NIPOST has ever been doing, trying to abrig people in places within the possibility of uh, the highest level of transportation mode. And electronic device today is a higher service of transporting messages from one place to another. On the basis of that, it is uh, a, a dictum in the postal service that the highest level of technology should be incorporated into every aspect of the post. And as a result of that today, 
you will see before we were using something like poster and money order. We have now translated and transformed into using what is called the post cash. We are also having a kind of relationship with the central bank, which is trying to ens uh, 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 ensure the appropriate use of the highest level of technology in what is called financial inclusion, which forms one of the cardinal principles of the Universal Postal Union. Despite the challenges faced by the traditional mailing system, the post office, governments across the world see it as more than a commercial entity serving a distinct social purpose. So the post office must be protected and properly found to meet up with the demands of the new age. Nigeria is Africa's second largest economy, on track to becoming one of the 20 largest economies in the world by 2020. But this dream could be marred, going by its inability to diversify its economy, experts say. Though the petroleum sector is important, it remains a small part of the country's overall vibrant economy, with successive government paying little attention to the other sectors, including technology, manufacturing, among others. Government is the biggest buyer in this country. The economic control of government is probably 70%. They should first of all give the lead by example by local. Similar to the what you are trying to do about local content. Once you do that, and I say we built Abuja, that is the biggest city that has been built in the world in the last 15 years, 20 years after we after the one in Brazil. And during that period, Almost all our cement factories went down. All ceramic factories that make white ware for toilets and so on closed down. The advent industry, almost all of them went down. Something's wrong with us. Our government should find ways to make sure that local capacity is being built. Not if there's not enough capacity, let's import. They should say, why is this capacity not enough? Then let it be enough. And you can make any capacity enough in two months. It was on this note that stakeholders gathered in Ibafu, Ogun State, to appeal to the federal government to formulate and implement stringent policies that will compel patronage of made in Nigeria goods, as this has been one of their major headaches. Many industries, such as bioganics, are not promoted. We are not even them protected. So we suffer commercial injury. Because foreign companies who do what we do here, whom we know better what to do, are bringing in their products and Nigerian companies and buy from them. Without any commitment to buy from local industries who match quality and price and just in time delivery. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Olusegun Aganga, who listened carefully to their request, said the ministry has developed a strategic industrial revolution plan to fast track Nigeria's economic diversification and promised to further incorporate the plight of local manufacturers into the initiative. You made a lot of uh, important uh, comments uh, and I've addressed, so we talked about it as we went along. But one thing which is obvious that you're not uh, maybe familiar is the fact that we we have developed what we call that Nigeria Industrial Revolution. And that plan itself um, is very different from whatever we've done in the past. Um, in four main areas, I can, I can say it ways different. It's different because it's very strategic, meaning that we're looking at the sectors, industries where Nigeria has competitive and comparative development. In order for Nigerian economy to grow, Nigerian youth need to become productive. Small and growing businesses must evolve into world-class organizations by learning and practicing winning leadership strategies. This was a submission of renowned business and marketing consultant Brian Tracy at the Entrepreneurs Breakfast Enclave, which held recently in Lagos. Remember, you will always have far more to do than you have time. So the only way you can accomplish anything is by doing only the most important things. 
In his lecture, Tracy, who has consulted for more than a thousand companies around the world, spoke on the requirements to building a high-profit business with technology playing a critical role. I would always do whatever he asked me fast. And I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I learned later that's one of the greatest secrets of success in business. It's whatever your boss asks you to do, do it fast. For participants at the event, it was a day made. What I've learned from this event, um, Brian Tracy precisely, um, is about innovation, is about how simple it is to actually build and run a business by following the time-tested principles, which are very simple but difficult to follow. It's the ripple effect we're creating. is actually being able to make capacity building be something that will stand out in Nigeria. Um, when you empower a man, like, like a white man said once, so when you stretch the mind of a man, it doesn't come back to his original position. One of the things we saw in this was the fact that this is an opportunity for young entrepreneurs in Nigeria to learn from a renowned author like Brian Tracy. One of our key things is pushing the development of small and medium enterprises as well as corporates because that's the backbone of the country. It's nearly two years since the launch of the Nigerian Communications Satellite 1R, a replacement for the first satellite commonly referred to as Nightcomsat 1, which was deorbited in November 2008, exactly 18 months after its operation. The launch of Nightcomsat 1R was acclaimed by experts as the satellite is said to be a hybrid satellite with footprints in 30 African countries, parts of Europe and parts of Asia. We caught up with the Managing Director and CEO of Nightcomsat, Engineer Ahmed Rufai, at the just-concluded meeting of the National Council on Communication Technology in Akure, the Ondo State Capital, and he speaks on the impact of the Nightcomsat 1R and on several issues affecting the Nigerian ICT industry. What would you say has changed since the launch of the Nightcomsat 1R? Well, what has changed, number one, is the fact that um, there's, there's capacity and there's capability. Since the launch of Nigerian Concert 1R, the satellite control has been domesticated and domiciled in the hands of Nigerians. So that is capacity and we've operated the satellite now for over 18 months. You know, if you, if you recall, the first satellite spent 18 months and it was controlled by China. Mm -hmm. Now it was, it's, it's been controlled by Nigerians, you know, so that's a demonstration of capacity and capability. What has also changed uh, is the fact that, you know, Nigerians that are using it now, you know, are buying uh, capacity almost one third mm -hmm. of what uh, uh, they, they used to buy it from uh, foreign operators. Mm -hmm. What has also changed is the fact that when they buy this capacity, you know, they buy in naira, they don't buy in dollars. So it has, uh, you know, stopped capital flight appropriately to the percentage that it is being used. Mm -hmm. The quality of service from satellite is good enough, you know, you know, for the, you know, you know, 90, 80 percent of, of, of our requirement. You get it, yes. yeah. Because um, you cannot be talking of salad for somebody who, who is who is who is who is suffering from uh, you know malnutrition, uh, you, you know <laughs> suffering from uh, hunger. You 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 see Nigerians, you know, talking of latency, uh, that is you know, latency, uh, you know, fiber latency yeah. and this and that. When when you don't even have access to two kilobit per second or four kilobit per second, mm. you, you get it. Somebody is dying of hunger. You are you are talking of salad. Okay. Now we have we have fundamentally what what you what what is just good enough, you know. If you come to transportation sector, for instance, you know, I mean, when we cannot even produce of uh, we, we can't even uh, we, we could not we, we did not even succeed in, in domesticating um, um, uh, a pigeon, which is a very simple you know you know you know car. We have everything, but we could we couldn't just take it to that to to to, to the end. Mm -hmm. Whereby we can start building our engines, molding our engines here, uh, you know you, you know locally. And of course, you know some of the basic um, core uh, component of the of, of the car. We, we couldn't domesticate now. You you you'll be talking of oh, um, you uh, we cannot produce um, BMW or you know you know high end vehicle. You no, know, no, that's not the issue. Start from the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Okay, we still have poor quality of internet service in Nigeria. What do you think is responsible for this? Despite the fact that we have about five uh, different um, fiber optic cables landed at the shores of uh, the country. The fact that uh, uh, fiber optics is not uh, a one-fit solution, mm. you know, for connectivity to the last mile, 
the to bring it to the question to bring the question to uh, to perspective of uh, an average Nigerian, a non-technical Nigerian, mm. uh, one can reframe it that despite the fact that Lagos is bordered by the sea, why is there no water you know, in some part of Lagos okay. or pipe on water in some part of Lagos? Mm. You know, Lagos is, is just by the sea. Mm. You get it. You know, so the fact that we have the Atlantic Ocean, you know, does not guarantee that somebody mm -hmm. in Oshudi or in uh, Alimosho or in uh, Moshi will get water. Yeah, because there is still one you needed to dissolve the water. Then after the salt, you have to pump, you have to transport the water pipe connectivity yeah. to the home ah, before the person can enjoy the water. So there is that need of piping. Mm. After landing at the shore, the you know terabyte of capacities. You know, first of all, the fiber is just an ordinary pipe, oh, no content. Mm. Internet has to flow into it. Mm. Now, when the internet flows into it, if you want connectivity, then you have to be piped. Now, how do you do this piping? There are three options: microwave, wireless, satellite, or fiber to homes, okay. if we can afford it. But a, fiber, a string of fiber can take about 10 gigabytes. So if you take 10 gig to your house, what you are doing is like somebody who will use one meter pipe to bring water to his house. It doesn't make sense. Because an average home today in Nigeria, if you buy by the, the OECD definition, if you have 256 kilobit per, per, per second guaranteed connectivity, it is already a broadband. You get it. So you can do that via satellite, you can do that through microwave wireless. But one of the key problems is the fact that the last mile infrastructure to bring the fiber to sorry, the IP to me and you mm -hmm. is highly, highly limited. If uh, by the by the telecoms policy we have said that the definition of broadband is 1.5 megabit per second Th those are definitions of you know developed countries yeah. so it which means that the the bandwidth per capita for every nigerian citizen is 1.1.1.5 so if you take 160 million nigerians so we are looking about 240 terabytes so what you won't have in lagos the fiber optics you have in, uh, in lagos is still grossly inadequate despite that you can't even distribute so the key problem now is distribution, the last mile distribution. And that is where the satellite solution comes in as an immediate solution. For news, views, trends in ICT globally and Africa in particular, watch AIT Infotech Network for the latest news and innovation in ICT for development in Africa. Plus, what technology can do for you from business to politics, tourism and culture. I am Bayero Agabi. You're welcome. to your best ICT issue on the continent, AIT Infotech Network, and I am Bayeru Agabi. To participate, don't forget to log on to AITinfotechnetwork.com or you watch us live at Sabwa Africa TV on YouTube, or better still, you text us. Hello and thanks for joining us in this interview segment of the program. I am Francisca Nana and today we are taking a look at um, ICT development in Nigeria. At the just concluded National Council on Communication Technology, a lot of issues were raised by the participating state and uh, various agencies of government that participated at the co a meeting that held in Akure, the Ondo state capital. To join us today to take a look at this is the Director General, the Acting Director General of the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDDA. He is Dr. Ashiru Daura. So you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. All right. At the second meeting of the National Council on Communication Technology that just, um, that's going on in there now, we saw you made, make some prayers and um, 
some critical ones at that. One of them, you prayed that states should contribute 2% of their annual budget to ICT development. Why did you make this suggestion? You see, currently, states, I mean, spend a hand without any specific uh, amount. So as a state, we felt there is need to have a fixed percentage, so that the fixed percentage of the budget is dedicated to IT development. Okay. So if we start with 2%, maybe next year we will go a bit higher than that. But let us start with a dedicated amount, so that at one point somebody will not say there are no funds for this. But if we dedicate a certain percentage, then that percentage will be totally and fully put into IT development. In okay. the state. Why do you think um, IT professionals should get a special remuneration? IT is because of the importance of IT. Mm. Because nearly all the sectors will benefit from this. Okay. Whether it is education, health, uh, tourism, all the sectors will benefit from whatever is put in IT. Okay. Because it will reflect either in terms of training of IT personnel, yes. in terms of provision of infrastructure, or e-government uh, services. All the sectors will be the beneficiaries. Um, some states asked today that um, the, the, the federal government true need that should give them 50% subsidy on um, the computer ownership scheme to uh, enable them implement the project to a large extent. What's your take on this? It's not feasible. Even the, the one driven by the FMCT, we're not given that amount. We're not given 50% subsidy. So how can we go and uh, do it at the state level? You have 36 states and, and FCT. Mm -hmm. Now, if, assuming they say they want 100,000 people in every state to get a computer yeah. every year, and you are subsidizing by 50%, you can calculate how, m how many. That would, that would be a huge amount of money. In the billions which we don't have. Yes. And moreover, the states being, I mean, having their independent budgets can subsidize if they will. Uh, all we need is the understanding, the awareness, and the will. Mm. NIDA has been pushing for a national IT park. Is this project still in process? No, it's not forgotten. Also, as I said earlier, we have a, pro, I mean, collaboration with. Uh, Cross River State Government. Uh, the background of that was that we wanted to establish two IT parks. Okay. One in one of the southern states, and another in one of the northern states. Okay. So the Cross, uh, Cross River State Government approached us for an MOU, in an agreement, so that that park would be situated in Calabar, in Tinaba, acknowledged. And we agreed to sign the agreement, and we are working on so we'll go ahead and do a similar thing in the, in the northern part, whether through an MOU or an uh, outright, okay. which I think is rather good thing. The MOU is better because the states could provide some basic infrastructure, some facilities, and ours will be to, uh, to put the remaining IT infrastructure and okay. services that are needed. So okay. the project, the IT platform, is really on course to pursue it. And over the years, NIDA has also organized um, a national conference, or should I call it an international conference of sorts, uh, called in Nigeria. Is this going? Is this still going to continue? This is our flag uh, zone of our flagship. We, we we started it, and we accept. I think 2011. We didn't. Uh, miss it. Every year later it comes. And even this year it is in progress. We are going to have it God willing. Okay. So it is uh, in progress. Okay. We have not abandoned and will not God willing will not abandon. Okay. It's because there's a lot of uh, benefits, uh, a lot of knowledge sharing and other benefits. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If you've been watching, um, that was Dr. Ashiru Daura, the Acting Director General of the National Information Technology Development Agency, NIDDA. Thank you and it's bye for now.
That is the show for now. For more details, please log on to www.youtube.com slash TV for more details. Or simply text us your comment. Until next week, I remain yours sincerely. Bye, everyone.